Do you post updates to your Google business profile? If you don't, you're missing an opportunity to take advantage, to communicate to clients and prospects, and also to Google within your Google business profile. Stay tuned in this episode. We're going to walk through how to do that and some of our best practices to post weekly to your Google business profile. the local SEO tactics where we bring you tips and tricks to get found online. I'm your host, Jesse Dolan. This episode here today, we're going to revisit a topic which we've talked about in the past on various episodes, and that's your Google business profile posting. So this has been around for a while, for a few years, and we put out some content here. Let's pull up some to reference. Uh, Back in episode 19, we talked about uh, what are the offer posts, which I'll describe that here in a second, and how to use them. Episode 40, we talked about um, what are these posts, how to use them, 42, setting up your initial posting strategy. And then in episode 86, we talked about uh, repurposing some of your web content, blog posts, articles, things like that, um, and turn them into Google business profile posts. So if you want a primer or maybe some kind of tangential information on GBP posting, uh, check out those episodes. Here today, we're going to talk about um, just kind of posting once a week Uh, some best practices and some tips that we have that we use for our clients uh, that I think are going to help you out here. So let's dive in first, a little bit of background on this. If you don't take a moment to kind of check out those previous episodes, I'm just going to go over a quick summary on what this is, why it matters to you. So first, Google business profile, that is your free profile that you can set up on Google, uh, formerly called Google My Business or GMB. Now it's Google business profile, which is then GBP because we love acronyms. And this is completely free with Google. You set it up. They have to verify that you're a legitimate business. They'll usually send you a postcard with a pin. And there's a process there. Uh, Again, we've walked through this in other episodes, so I'm not going to belabor that point. Uh, But you do have to have a Google business profile um, that's active and accessible uh, to be able to do this posting. Uh, So what is this post? It's kind of just like a a mini blog post, right? Or maybe a social media post, that type of function where you're just putting up some information to share uh, to prospects, clients, and just the public at large. And this is posted on your Google business profile. So this is visible if you do a desktop search, if you show up in the knowledge panel, uh, off to the right hand side. Uh, if you just do right now, just do a search for your business, like your proper business name, if that's what's on your GBP listing for your name. And uh, you'll see your knowledge panel off to the right hand side. If you're doing any posting, it'll be visible um, down in that. And if you're not doing any posting, well, you won't see it there, but that's what'll show up after we go through this here. So on mobile and in maps, it's also visible uh, pretty much anywhere in Google where uh, the local business information, either through maps or the knowledge panel, uh, is going to show up because uh, that's where your GBP uh, is triggered. So this won't be part of your website, right? This is going to be part of your Google business profile, but it is good for SEO. Um, this is a spot, kind of like we always say in your GBP, when Google gives you the ability to input information, to communicate to Google, uh, i.e. put in keywords, right? We want to take advantage of that. So this is a great spot to be able to do that. And usually you don't have to create uh, some unique piece of content or you know, have it be a very you know, laborious process. You're, you already have all this information probably on your website, through social media, maybe email newsletters that you're sending out, whatever it is. Uh, you just want to repurpose that content really or, or spin it or, or kind of get inspired by it. So a couple other housekeeping things here. So this used to be, I keep referring to this as GBP posts. And I will through the episode here and indefinitely in the future. But when we go into the profile, which I'll show in a second here with screen sharing for everybody that's watching on video, or if you're just listening, if you want to come back later and check this out on YouTube, uh, we'll have a little bit of a walkthrough. Um, But it is called an update now, right? It used to be called posts. Now it's called an update. So as we get in there, you'll see um, that's what the function is. And also these used to be only visible for seven days once you input them into your GBP. Uh, Google changed that a number of months ago, and it is now six months that this will be visible. If you don't have anything in your profile that's fresher than six months, I believe there's a button that it says like, you know, view recent content or something to that effect. So it still is there. It doesn't get deleted and it remains in your your file, in your repository, in your profile uh, indefinitely, but it's only shown to search users uh, for six months. 
Another really cool part about this, which kind of shows the horsepower for SEO is the information that you put, the text, I should say, that you put into your GBP posting and updates can trigger and be included in the justifications for your profile. And what do I mean by justifications? I also refer to this as uh, snippets. If you do a search and you get the map pack, we'll always see, right, like we're familiar with the reviews, the business information, but then sometimes there's a, maybe a, a little quote or a snippet from a review that somebody left that has the keyword or related phrase. Other times it'll say this business offers or provides or has whatever. It's going to be able to pull that information out of these updates. So the information that you put into these updates, not only is visible to the public, they can read that, be exposed to it and get your message there. Also uh, understand that all this information we're going to putting into this post is feeding right into Google. And that's all your keywords, right? What's your intent as a business? What kind of products and services do you offer? Uh, it's great for all that as well. So how do we post? Well, let's, let's do a little screen share here. Hey everyone, just a quick message about our free SEO audit tool on localseotactics.com and we'll get right back to the show. If you haven't taken advantage of it yet, go on out to localseotactics.com slash free SEO audit or uh, look for the yellow button up in the top right corner, click that. And it's gonna take just a couple seconds. You enter in the page that you wanna optimize what you're looking for the audit to score against. Enter in that page, enter in the keyword you're looking to get optimized for, and enter in your email address, click the button, and it's going to take a few seconds, and then it's going to send you off a PDF report uh, via email. Uh, it's a great report. It's going to kind of give you an overall score of some vital SEO areas for that page and for your website at large, even though it's auditing this page. Um, that's going to tell you some of the good things that are happening, some of the bad things that are happening too, and give you basically a checklist of some things that you need to shore up and what you can do to improve your SEO for that page for that keyword that you're auditing. Now you can use this as many times as you want. You can do multiple keywords, multiple pages, multiple keywords on the same page. You can even use this to uh, check against your competitors, right? If you want to do a little reverse engineering, uh, see how they're scoring for a certain keyword, what they may be doing good uh, that you're not and some things to improve there. So lots of different ways to use it completely free. Again, go on to localseotactics.com slash free SEO audit, or look for the yellow button in the top right corner of the website. And here we're looking at our Intrix listing and you can see right here, where is it? If I can hover over it, there it is, add update. So we don't have a lot of activity on this GBP, which is why I'm going to show it here. But if we click add update, you can see here we have three types of updates to get into the add update, which is what we're going to do here. Post updates to your customers on Google. Also add an offer and add an event. We're going to be covering those in future episodes a little bit more in depth. As I mentioned, we did a pretty good one on the uh, the offer, uh, add an offer or offer post uh, previously. You can check that out. It's a little bit outdated now, but the core information is still there. And uh, the event we're going to be getting to here down the road. So let's click, click add update. And you can see uh, just what it's going to look like for you. You can add a description or IE your content. Uh, this is 1500 characters. And just like you know any other piece of content on your website or in your SEO uh, related marketing, keywords and phrases are gonna matter here. Uh, top to bottom, left to right. That's how we read in Western culture, right? So same thing applies here. Input your keywords, make sure they're early and often. Uh, related phrases, um, kind of different variations on those keywords geographic references, things like that. Uh, just have some intention on what you're gonna be crafting and writing here. Oftentimes you can just pull this information from, uh, again, in a blog post that you have, or maybe a product or service page on your website. We recommend don't copy and paste it exactly, change it around a little bit. We're looking for unique content, um, not just plagiarized right off your own website, but uh, don't think that you have to create a brand new piece of unique content. You can definitely repurpose it and, and make your life easy. And again, it's 1500 characters. So I might've said words earlier. If I did, I didn't mean that it's 1500 characters and you can do some basic stuff, uh, bullet pointing or emojis, things like that. Uh, some of it works, some of it doesn't, you'll have to play with it. And once you publish the post, you'll be able to see it and uh, see what carries over. Um, but otherwise just input that in there and right off to the right here, you can see we can add a photo. Uh, go ahead and add your photo. Um, we definitely like to use unique images, not something from stock photography. Um, even if just take something with your iPhone, it doesn't have to be the greatest image ever created, but it should be relevant and unique um, to this topic. Again, if you have that image on your website, let's just say it was a blog post, go ahead and um, bring that one over and you can use that for this as well. And then you can see right here uh, for add a button, there's a few options. 
Uh, it says optional. We definitely recommend that you add a button. And our favorite is just learn more. And that's going to link back to your website. You can see there's some other options here, book, order online, buy, sign up and call now. Um, as you pick them here, if I did call now, you know, you can input the phone number that you want to use, sign up, you know, link to a sign up page, things like that. We say learn more. It's very generic, very general. Everybody knows what it means. And it allows you, as you can see here, a link for your button. It'll put a button on the post. And that's going to link back to your website. So I'm going to stop the screen share there. And I want to dive into some best practices here uh, for how to utilize this and leverage it um, where we have success. So when you add that button, you want to link it back to your web page, um, not your homepage, right? So just think about what is the topic that you're posting on. Uh, let's just say if it was a service that you provide. If you're an electrician, you know, you're going to have half a dozen or a couple dozen services. Ideal in your website, you have a page for each major you know, service or, or chunk of services, we would want to do the same thing here. Um, so for every service page on your website, you know, that can be a Google post for you down the road. You're, we're going to want to do one of these per week. You can do more. Uh, you can do less as well. We just like that frequency and that cadence of one a week. It's easy to get into, do it Monday morning, Friday afternoon, whatever it is, and just go through. And every service page on your website, just use that as inspiration. And then when you use the image from that. And when you put in the text from that, you're going to link back through, through this learn more button to that exact page. So that's not only going to provide all this information to Google for here's what you do, here's the image, etc. You're going to link it back to that web page and kind of help close the loop on that. Uh, that's for Google. Now for human beings and users out there, you know, when you click on that button, it's going to bring you right to your web page, which is what we want, right? We're, we want traffic to our website. We want people to convert. We want them to digest that information. Uh, so that's another reason why we want to do that. So that's the main concept. Other ways that you can leverage this are, I just mentioned like your service pages. Maybe you do e-commerce or uh, even if you don't have e-commerce, we'll make product pages that, you know, it's not something you can buy, but just like a service page, it really gives all the details, features, benefits, uh, information about that product. Same thing here uh, for every product that you have, you can make uh, a post for this in your Google business profile, every blog post that you have and really anything else. Um, some clients that we work with, maybe they don't have a ton of that information on their website, but they post a lot on social media. You know, same thing here. If you're posting something on social media, go ahead and repurpose that content or that idea and that thought uh, into your Google business profile posting, uh, create an update for that. Sometimes if you're posting to social media, maybe you just have a really cool image. You don't have a lot of text. This is 1500 characters of text. You don't have to use all 1500. We would definitely recommend at least a few sentences. You're going to want to take advantage of this and put in those keywords and phrases that are relevant to your business. And worst case scenario, you should be able to rattle off a couple of sentences about whatever your topic is um, if you're sitting down to do this. So don't feel obligated to use all 1500 characters, but definitely get a few keywords in there. Uh, give a little bit of a description on what it is that you're posting about and uh, fire that thing off. Uh, so there you go. Kind of a quick one here. This is not um, very technical or very complicated, but it is something that we find when we bring on a new client. It's something we're having to do with every client. There's not a lot of um, businesses out there where if you don't have an SEO working for you or, or helping you out, you're probably not doing this, I guess is what I'm trying to say, which is what we find. So if you're watching or listening, definitely take action on this. This is a very easy thing to do to start creating more content uh, in your GBP, gets you into that GBP as well. There's just great habits here for maybe replying to reviews, reading messages, keeping your profile updated. Uh, a lot of good reasons to be in your profile once a week uh, to be doing this post and then just do some other housekeeping while you're in there. So hopefully that helps you out. Just a little quick one here uh, today. That's pretty easy to do, um, but definitely a, a good impact. If you like this, we would love to hear from you. Um, we'd love to get a review. Go on out to localseotactics.com. Scroll down to the bottom. Click the button to leave a review. And we'd love to hear from you, whether it be through Apple Podcasts, Facebook, Google Business Profile, as we're talking here today. Whatever it is, that's how we know this show is beneficial for you. And uh, we'll keep doing it. If you do leave us a review, we're going to read it. We have a great one here from Momo Joe 9 I'm sorry, Momo Joe 9 says, I'm so excited that I found this podcast. I'm about a decade late to the SEO party, but I guess it's never too late. That is correct. Fortunately, I found this podcast and it's really helpful. Easy to understand, great insights, perfectly aligned with all the questions I have in my head. Thank you. Triple exclamation marks. Thank you for that. If you feel that same way, we'd love to have a review from you. Like I said, go on to localseotactics.com, scroll down the button, scroll down to the bottom, 
click the button for leaving a review and we'd love to hear from you. Also, just like Momo Joe nine says, if you have questions that are in your head that are aligned with you, if we haven't answered them yet on the show, please drop us a line. You can also click the button there for submit a question and we'd love to hear from you. Use it on the show. Helps you, helps all of us. And yeah, thanks for tuning in everybody. Hopefully this episode was good one for you. We'll check in the next one. Take care.